Hello, everyone. It's Sunday once again. Um, I hope you're sorry. I don't know what I'm going to say. Um, I really love Sundays and I hope you're all enjoying your weekend so far. Um, unless, of course, you're in the Middle East, then a Sunday is a weekday. But I still hope that you're enjoying it. So, um, yeah, um, it's now two o'clock or one minute past two in the UK. So it's one minute past one, no, one, no, one minute past 10 in the evening in Manila. And it's also early morning, it's like 10 o'clock in New York, um, where my guest is coming to us live from. I mean, I'm really sorry because I just got back from Glasgow a few hours ago. I was there last night. I was like, oh my God, Jerry Love, absolutely amazing. But anyways, Glasgow is really beautiful and this, uh, that's the place where I actually, I didn't get to meet him, my guest today, but he was there last year. So um, yeah, that's why I really love Glasgow. And I'm really glad that he said yes to Astrid Drummer. So um, my dear friends, please welcome Phil Sutton, AKA Hofner Benz. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello. Oh my God. Good morning, Hello, Phil, man. how are you? Good afternoon, even. <laughs> Not too bad. Um, yeah, it was a horrible morning. day here in New York yesterday. It was absolutely pouring with rain, and I had a rehearsal with with my group, and um, and yeah, we we got stuck. It was one of those. I don't know if you have pirate rehearsal rooms. It's like a uh, you pay up front, and then you get a code to a door, and you let yourself in, and there's no staff oh. there. And uh, but the code wasn't working, so me and we're all standing outside, getting absolutely drenched. And, um, but today it's really sunny. It's really nice. So yeah, I, I might have moved to New York nearly twenty years ago, but I'm obviously still talking about the weather. <laughs> I think you you are British, right? You're not yeah, uh, yeah. from me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my wife is American, and uh, Jennifer and she, and uh, we married two thousand and five, and I I, yeah. I emigrated to the US in uh, two thousand and seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, yeah. They say that British people they love talking about the weather. I mean, that's the one thing that I noticed when they moved in. I think it's just British people are terrified of silence. So you know, it's like a lot, a lot. Of, I think a lot of other nationalities they can sit around in silence and be comfortable with each other. But I think English people, there's a silence. They're like, we have to fill it with something, and so we fill it with talking about the weather. Oh, right. <laughs> Although Americans, I mean, everyone talks about the weather nowadays, anyway. So. Yeah, oh, that's, that's interesting. I didn't sort of like know that, but I think, yeah, you're right. Because I mean, like us, we're okay with sort of like just not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Like... I mean, I, I think it's because British people are uptight <laughs> or have been <laughs> traditionally. I mean, you, you see representations of English people on, uh, especially English people, I should say, like, maybe less so Scots and, and, and the Welsh, but um, you know, it's uh. Everyone's uptight in the films, aren't they? Or an awkward and stumbling, <laughs> um, uh, 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 you know, which is uh, the, the I mean, bumbling, parts yeah. of the country, obviously. You know, but I mean, you're in Manchester, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, There's yeah, I've, I've been, been here for a while now. Talk yeah. About the weather. Well, well, they do. They do so like you go to so like wait for a bus, and then someone will just sort like tell you how dreadful the weather is, or yeah, yeah. Isn't it nice, or. Right? You're in England, but, fella. Of course it yeah. is. <laughs> anyway, so as I said oh, earlier, yeah. you were at um, Glasgow's Pop last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. And I really have to apologize because I, I, I didn't know who you are. I think you and the vast majority of people on the planet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it's like nine people know who I am. So um, I brought loads of props today, like just to show that I have played on records. Like, oh, like right. the first record I ever played drums on. Oh, wow. So I'm taking over. You probably got questions for me. I don't know. This is comic yeah. game. Oh, this is called Some Hearts Paid to Lie, and it was recorded oh, okay. by uh, in 1993. And this is the first thing that Comic Gain were ever on. And Comic Gain is an English indie band that have been going for years. And uh, oh, that's I, I was the founding member. I played drums on this. Yeah. So we've got props like this, which I might pop up occasionally in, in <laughs> case in case we run out of things to say about the weather. And, Oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, uh, it's very early for me on a Sunday, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm. Oh I'm yeah, yeah. Have you had your coffee yet and breakfast? 
I have coffee in front of me and I've had some coffee and breakfast before. Yeah. So All right, okay. Yeah. Well we're gonna we're gonna start now because I remember so like on Instagram I posted like photos, not just of uh, Mr. Pastel, but I remember to a kid and you were behind as well. And I was like, Oh my yeah. god, I didn't even realize That's not my favorite picture of me. But um <laughs> I had the stripy shirt, let's put it that way. But um yeah, Glasgow's pop was fantastic. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I, oh. I was actually in the country to see my family because uh, I hadn't seen them since COVID, before COVID, and um, and the, and and I, I knew Glasgow's pop was on. Glasgow, am I saying that right? Yeah, Glasgow's pop was on, so yeah. I, I wanted to go up, and I, I, I'd met Kenji before, who was one of the organisers, and and I knew Tita. Uh, I'd spoken to her online, and we had mutual friends, yeah. but I'd never met. But that was so that's nice to meet them and and catch up with people was was really lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And awesome. I know, I know that you're playing at Glasgow Spot this year, but I'll ask you about that later on. In yeah, the yeah, show. Sure. So yeah, but first, let me welcome you to Ask the Drummer. Um, episode one hundred and nineteen is all about you, Phil Sutton, aka Hofner Burns. Yeah, Hofner Burns. I mean, is that your uh drummer stage name no it's it it's look let me show you something this is where i need to again uh where is it hang on oh here it is right this is this is the first record comic gain lp so it's really shiny um there's nowhere i can hold it and yeah, I'm no, there. No, no, no. And, and we this was like a, i think the first photo shoot we did the first proper photo shoot we did it with the photographer alice in wonderland um and it was up on the roof of the building where David the singer lived, and um, um, and uh, we we were like being uptight talking about the weather. We thought we're not. This is how do you do a photo shoot? I don't know. So David and I split a bottle of wine in the morning, and um, and I went. We went up on the roof and we had our photos taken. I nearly fell off the roof. The bass player here, Jax, actually st stopped me falling off the roof. So I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. Oh, and, uh, oh. I, should, I should tell how grateful I am. But um, and uh, then we went downstairs, and we and and in this record, there's a a little uh, there's little bios because we were really into '60s bands, you know, like the Hollies and stuff. And they all asked this these questions. So it'd be like, "Who are you? What you know? What do you play? What are your favorite records? What's your favorite food? Your oh, favorite right. kind of yeah, yeah. And, did that. and for some reason, because I drank half a bottle of wine, I thought it'd be fun to give myself a fake name. And so I called myself <laughs> Hofner Burns, and I said I was from Buenos Aires. And I was yeah, it's too late now. I can't change it. So <laughs> that's the only record that I have that name on it. I have that name. But I've used it. I've I've recycled it for uh, for um, my solo record. So I yeah. it was love burns, and it's yeah, love it's, uh, yeah. trauma burns, and so uh, yeah. <laughs> but but no, your real name is my name is Phil. You know. Yeah, it's Phil. <laughs> Yeah, and can you just tell us where were you born? Because obviously born, you're not from New York. I was so. born in uh, near Bielefeld, in West, the former West Germany. Um, my dad oh. was in the my dad was in the army. So, oh, um, I see. Uh, yeah, and we we and 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 pale lights. My my other group is we're going out to Germany, uh, three weeks, um, to play the Cologne Pop Fest, and also we're going to yeah. play Augsburg, mm -hmm. which is home to our record label. Um, so I'm kind of excited. I thought about going back to the place of my birth, but we left when I was two and a half. Also, I was a baby. I don't remember. I go, oh, it's here I was born, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, long answer to the, the question. I was born in Germany. <laughs> well, okay, and then, and then you moved to uh, where in England? We, we moved all over because my dad was in the army. So we ended up yeah. in Oxfordshire um, in a right. small village there near a town called Bicester, which some people know. Because uh, there's a place called Bista Village, which is like, oh yeah, yeah, it's like a shopping center, but it's a yeah. yeah, yeah. That wasn't there when I left, um, when I moved out of my parents' house. But um, I think my uh, my sister worked there briefly, and um, so that's what it's famous for. But usually, I tell people Oxford because people oh, don't yeah. they haven't heard of Launton, the village where we lived, and and yeah, Bista or sometimes maybe not, but. Yeah, I think people in the UK have heard of it, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've been to Bister Village. It's like a big Clark's uh, shoe. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I've never been there, but I've, I, you know, people go. I, I say I'm from. Oh, you might have heard of it. I'm from Bister. They go, oh, Bister Village. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's a town. What are you on about? And they go, no, no, it's like a, a theme park for shopping. <laughs> I've not been there. Like out, I think they call it um, Outlet Mall or something. Right, yeah. But isn't it all little houses? Yeah, 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 that's right, yeah, yeah. Just quite um, <laughs> anyways, before we continue, Lee Grimshaw, hello, Lee. Uh, he says, hello, Phil, see you hello, in Germany. Lee. So, yeah, he's going to Germany as yeah, well. Yeah, I've met Lee. It's <laughs> nice day. Yeah. So, um, are you from a um, musical family? No. Not a No, not okay. Remotely. Which shows <laughs> up, I think, in my playing. If you, if you were to break down the tracks and listen to my drumming and singing and guitar playing, you'd be like, no. He's, he's definitely not from a musical family. Um, not really, no. Um, my mum had the radio on all the time. Uh, she, was into, she was always playing Radio 2 or Radio, especially Radio 1, but sometimes Radio 2. Um, so we listened to pop music all the time. So I was really into pop music. And I think when I was a kid, it was like the 70s through into the 80s. And that was just a, like a really good period for pop music in, 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 in the UK. Um, yeah. You know, with, with there was the bands that would be like called indie bands now, I guess. You know, but there were some great groups at that time. Obviously, like Dexys and the Specials and the Jam and all that kind of thing. And I really love Blondie. I liked ABBA too. I just like pop music. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've forgotten. I'm blanking his name now. As an author, wrote a fantastic biography, autobiography. Is Somebody's going to shout. Sarah, out. is it Sarah Duffus from Sarah Records? Is it Jane Duffus from? Oh Sarah no, Records? this was a this was a it was he's a music journalist. He's oh, music. in the UK, uh, I don't, but I'm just blanking because it's too early. He wrote a fantastic oh. book about growing up with pop music, and he was he's a, a Greek immigrant to the UK. Someone knows his name. I know. Is I'm it blanking. I've got is it he was born the same year as me. So yeah. that book, I loved it. It was so relatable because he was kind of going through, you know, why he liked all these different groups and this different music. And I was like, oh my God, this is kind of like me. I wasn't a Greek immigrant and I wasn't living in the same part of the UK. But yeah, that sums yeah. up, I think, for a whole generation of people in Britain, you know, who, who were kids in the 70s and 80s, what, what kind of, uh, you know, if you, if you were a bit of a music nut, um, what you were listening to. But no, I, I was never, I never had piano lessons. No. I got a guitar, I had it for about 10 minutes. I had it the wrong, I was holding it the wrong way around and go, why doesn't it play? You know, but I was yeah. doing this all the time around the house. So <laughs> driving people nuts, always tapping out drums. And, um, but I never yeah. had drum lessons. I didn't drum until I joined Comic Game because I think I was the oh. only person available. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Buffy that you're after? Is that the one? That's his name, right? Sorry, you can say? Yeah. Pafidis, I think it's, I got Yeah, yeah, Pete Pafidis. Pafidis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah Pete, Pete, that's it, yeah, I mean, it's early for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, like one o'clock is early on a Sunday for me. But yeah, fan, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have read it. It's a really, really great book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, a spokesman for a generation, I think. Well, I can tell from your Facebook post that you're like an indie pop master. You know, it's like you're like a walking encyclopedia of indie pop. You know, oh, a lot of not really. Sort of not like... compared to some people. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think English men especially can get very anal about independent music, you know, and, and, and knowing things about music. You've seen the memes, you know, there's a guy holding up a seven inch single and a woman's going, shoot me now, you know. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think my. It's funny, about 10 years ago, um, I, was, uh, I was in New York by this point, maybe it was more than 10 years, there's a band called The Sea Lions, they're an excellent band. Um, and um, they were playing in New York and I was talking to, talking to one of the members and I, and I was just talking about, and I'd seen Felt play and I'd seen the, and, and Comic Game, we used to open for the television personalities. And he's, it was like, wow, that's incredible. And uh, bear in mind, he was very young. And, uh, and it was like, no, I was just alive, you know? <laughs> and, and it was that, or Kylie Minogue and Rick Astley, and, you know, who, who now I have a, more of an appreciation for, but didn't at the time. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was just like, well, you know, this is, this is what we were listening to, you know, like there's somebody in 10 years is going to go, wow, you, you saw the sea lions. So, you know, um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, I just used to go to a lot of indie shows. Also, because I was, you know, I, I was into this, I was into, I was into pop music and then when I became a teenager, I did that thing of getting into the Smiths, which is what you did then, you know, when they were still going, 
and uh, and yeah. I thought, oh, nobody understands me. I'm so unique. You know, me and a million other Smiths fans listening, <laughs> listening to the Smiths on a woman. And uh, I don't really listen to the Smiths so much anymore, even though you know I love Johnny Mars guitar playing and everything. But um, but it, that was a that everyone talks about having a gateway band, and they were my gateway band. They got me into all sorts of other groups. So Morrissey would go, you should listen to the Primitives or the Shop Assistants. So so we did. We did as we were told, and uh, and you should watch, you know, Billy Lyre and and a, uh, a Taste of Honey and movies like yeah, that. Yeah. Listen to Marianne Faithful and Sandy Shore, and that kind of shaped my a little bit my taste in music. Although growing up with, you know, Radio One playing the oldies and things like that, and Radio Two, I, I was familiar with you know sixties music. Um, yeah. But sixties music for me informed my taste in eighties music and in and in later indie pop, I think. So this is yeah. a great band that I love, called Lightheaded. We were playing Glasgow's oh. band, they're a New Jersey band. This is their yeah, team. Yeah. I hope this comes out on record one day. And um, I really like them because they're kind of indie pop, they're doing something new with it, but at the same time, they, they're looking back to, you know, 60s music too. Like yeah. King, King, all that kind of stuff. So I really, I really like them. So I think- well, that, talking, about, yeah. talking about the Smiths and so like mm. uh, doing what Morris says, did you become a vegetarian yourself or? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, because no, I wanted a leather jacket. <laughs> oh, right. I have a leather jacket. If you, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, uh, well, you can, you can have a faux leather jacket, but yeah, I didn't get a leather jacket until much. Because one of the bands, one of the bands that you actually yeah. saw, like, uh, and I don't know if you were a drummer in that band called the Projects, because you played, got a song. I played, yeah, I played drums. The Projects had a few drummers, and I, I right, played. Yeah. Uh, I played on so I've got all my singles that I drummed on here. <laughs> and, uh, so I don't know why why people need to see this, but yeah, the projects were um, a really great band. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were let, I was in a band called Kicker and at the time. And, we and there rocking. was a song. There was like a song yeah. that's so this is this is something I play on. And that, that, that's proof. There's, there's me with long hair. There. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is a, this is like what I loved, one of the things I loved, like it, Graham was the leader of the group, he, he passed on some years ago, but um, fantastic group. He was such an original, really lovely guy, but he, he'd do things that no one else would think of. So on this, we did a cover of a Spanish song, which was a hit in the yeah. 60s, and, and a million red roses, a million crimson roses, which was a massive hit in Russia. And it I was going to say, is that Russian alphabet? Russian and Spanish. So it's like, oh. why did we never have a hit in, in Britain? I don't know. <laughs> But it's great. I love it, and I love that we could do something, you know, bonkers like that. And and uh, but but absolutely, you know, heartfelt as well. Yeah, I did an LP called Worlds of Love Broadcasting Code, um, which is a really good record. That was yeah. all because I I did a lot of click track stuff with that, and um, and um, uh, so a lot of my drums are sampled because um, Graham by this point he had MS at the time, and and uh, so he was working from his bedroom a lot um because he had trouble getting around and um or from his flat and um but he came out of the studio and he's like phil can you do a disco beat and i went you know like that and then can you do some drum rolls and i go just some quick quick drum rolls i go and then um and then so most of it he just kind of sampled all that stuff and then built these drum tracks up that sounded very natural and um but make me sound incredible so i really so I'm like, I kind of like it, but there's still like this song I actually did play live drums on. So there's a few live drums on it, but oh. I never thought in a million years when I started drumming with Comic Gain, yeah. I'd be doing, you know, kind of grown up stuff like that. Some people yeah. hate it. But I was like, no, this is awesome. You know, <laughs> well, I know I that drum roll. Like... Why do I need to do it again? Why can't you just re press a button and repeat? And that's all. Well, I know that you always saw like great. loads of bands, um, really? but. I know that you're sort of like in loads of different bands, but can, if I could sort of like go back and ask yeah. you, what was your first, was it Comet Gain, your first band? Yeah. You, did, you did say that uh, you didn't have any drumming lessons at all. Um, or I've had three drumming lessons in my life. And, and uh, um, I, I can't remember if I learned it. I, I think I learned how to hold the sticks just about. Um, <laughs> I was, I, yeah, when Comic Game started, it was a bedroom project and it was just David and me. And, and David was like, he's kind of the indie guru. So he's the one that has the encyclopedic knowledge of, of indie music, but also really more like 60s music. Like he can name every single spin off band from the birds. 
and all the musicians oh, that were in all his bands. And yeah, he's very, you know, he knows everything. He used to make mixtapes for everybody. Uh, and I just say, can I have, I want a mixtape of, of women singing, you know, in bands. And then he just makes something and it would be like the history of girl group through to, you know, Melody Dog, you know, the pastels, Katrina wow. Mitchell, and things just, and it was always really good. And I was like, this is great. I love this. And um, so he was the guru, but we started, the, he, he was very into lo-fi music at the time, but also kind of Dexy's Midnight Runners and stuff like that. And um, he'd be in his bedroom making these terrible tapes. Sorry, Fag. And um, and and he'd invite me, and I I was in the room next door, and he he noticed that I'm like going, you know, all the time and irritating everybody, and he said, oh, can you come and drum? And I went, I haven't got any drums, and so we get like the yellow pages phone book yeah. and, and like paintbrushes or a box or something, and just bash out beats. Um, <laughs> this lo-fi, and he had a four track, and we made this, and we made some tapes, and the tapes ended up in rough trade. And we went, and I was going to be the singer at one point. We went to play a show at the Bowling Gay in London. We lived in Oxford okay. at the time, and, and uh, this is two things we did. The first show we did, we didn't rehearse it. We didn't know what we were going to play. A friend called George Wright, who was in a band called Jack, came down and played bass, and um, I was going to be the singer. Mm -hmm. God knows what I was going to sing. And uh, but when we got there a bit late from Oxford. The, bu the bus was a bit late. It was something I'm sure you could appreciate. And uh, there was no mic by the drums, so that was it. My my singing career was over for 20 years. <laughs> oh, God. And and David kind of sang, I think. And then we had a guy called Dale, who who was in a band at the time called Blood Sausage. He came up and did some some kind of improvised singing. I think it was probably awful, but. Um, I, I met an old flatmate years later who said, you know, I didn't really like what you did, but I liked that first show. That was great. And it was just noise. And um, <laughs> we carried on in that, that that vein, I guess. And I didn't have a drum kit until I was the last comic game album I played on. So right. I just borrowed drums and had no lessons. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We, we were described as the worst band in Oxford at the time, though, I have to say. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, oh, by somebody who only liked the best and worst of music. The 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 big crime was to be mediocre, was to be quite good. You know, yeah, if you were fantastic or terrible, there was that oh, was yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, not in between. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's funny. Amelia yeah. Fletcher. I remember she said, "Sorry, this is because I've had coffee now." Amelia Fletcher from from Heavenly into. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw uh, an online in. Uh, um, it was, a, it was a lot, an online blog by a, a guy, um, I, I'm, I'm forgetting his name now, but he's the drummer in, in a band called Linus, uh, like oh. Linus in, in Charlie Brown that, that we, we played with a couple of times. And he had an online blog. And there's an Amelia Fletcher's, he's talking to Amelia Fletcher at the time, and this is like 93, and watching us play. And um, it's like an, our being terrible was kind of what made us good. Because Amelia said, if we sounded really, if we were really professional, we'd sound like Deacon Blue. And, um, which is like, no, we wouldn't have done, Amelia. And uh, she, I don't know if she's watching this, but if she does, then I'm sure she's coming out. But it's online. She said it. You can check it out. Um, but, um, so, yeah, so kind of being crap was, was good back then. Yeah. <laughs> Not very good line. We, we, we played a show supporting Bikini Kill. Um, this is in the Jericho Tavern in Oxford, and it was the second yeah. show that the, the the actual lineup you saw in that photograph of Comic Game played. And uh, I was so embarrassed by my drumming, I actually stopped drumming and hid behind the drum kit until it's over. No way, really? <laughs> well, well, Comic Game, oh, we kind of really... get away with it in the lo-fi days. I mean, we yeah, we, yeah. we do what the you know the the people always talk about the go-betweens, the wonderful go-betweens about them. Know, growing up in public, it's kind of what we did. We we got better. You go see Comic Game now; they're they're a slick machine. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it, it the early days was like, Sh shouldn't we rehearse this? <laughs> the first show we played with the the, the 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 second lineup, we met on stage. We didn't know what we were doing. We tried to do a Dex's Midnight Runners cover, and I, I can't. And I had a lot of fun, but I don't know if it's any good. <laughs> I'm not really well, I was I was gonna say because comic game was well, it wasn't really billed as comic game but last no two years ago at Glasgow yeah. spot David um Christian yeah. um he played um, yeah, I saw that. yeah and that's where I first saw Jerry Love play because uh, yeah. he played bass um Jerry Love for bass. 
my God. There you go. <laughs> Were you there? Were you... He's a, you know, he's a proper rock star. So, yeah. Apparently, he's, yeah. they call him, I, I've never met him, but I hear they call him Jerry Lovely. Oh. <laughs> he's a lovely fellow. Yes, he is. He is really lovely. Yeah. But were, yeah. were you were you at the Glasgow spot? The first Glasgow spot? Were you there? No, I, last year was my first one. Yeah, oh, well, that was your first yeah. one. Yeah, that yeah. was great because I got to meet uh, I got to meet Ronnie, who runs uh, Kleiner Untergrund Schallplatten, oh, the, yeah. the German yeah. label one. We never met before, and I don't speak German, and his English is pretty good. He thinks it's not great, but it's pretty good, and. Um, so that was nice to meet him, you know, because we've done three LPs with him and never met him before. And yeah, it was lovely meeting people, seeing people, catching up with people, seeing some great groups. Um, I, I think it, this year might be even better if you haven't already got your ticket for Glasgow's Pop. I, I believe there's still some available. We'll be on first. Uh, we're the first group to play, I think. Um, oh, are you going to be on Friday? We're on the, the Friday. First, one, the first one on Friday. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then this band is on next that I mentioned, who are who are really great. Who the indie kids amongst you probably have heard of this already. Of like, yeah. Uh, they're they're fab live, and and they're all incredibly excited because they're that they're kind of generation. They're obviously they're younger. They're in the twenties, I think, mostly. And uh, for them, it's like people like Amelia Fletcher are legends. You know, and Hello. all that, all other groups. So they're super excited about going, and I'm like, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I've seen it. Well, you know, I'm excited. I, I really, I, I love Glasgow's pop. I mean, I need to brush up on my indie pop. So it's like, such a nice history. setting. <laughs> but you've got some actual pop stars there as well, and bluebells. I can't believe you just told the truth. <laughs> I'd be playing yeah. the same bill as the bluebells, admittedly way down the line, well, way down the <laughs> roster, but. That would have been like, oh my god, because you know they were big pop stars, so that's great. But they they they're good because they kind of got the big pop career. But they they had that uh, compilation album come out a few years ago, which is fantastic, which is total postcard, you know, and postcard records type music. So yeah, yeah. so they, they they kind of straddled the two, you know, the the indie pop world and the and the actual proper pop world as well. Yeah, but, yeah, something exciting. Awesome. We have to sort of like talk about the other bands that you were in as well. Um, first is uh, the Soft City. Can you can you tell us about? Yeah, can you tell us more Soft about? City the was my first American band. Uh, I was I was in Comic Gain, and then I was in a band after that called Velocer. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And we we did. I did. A, I just did. The, I did this single uh, as an English and French edition, and then I played on. Uh, on the Crimea Liver, um, <laughs> which is a compilation that came out of Fierce Panda. Every every EP had a pun in it, and uh, and included on this is Unbelievable Truth, the audience, Bella Set, Peach Fuzz, Pure Grain, and and the Cleontel or the Cleontel as Americans call them, who are obviously a great group who I nearly drummed for. I nearly drummed oh. for Cleontel. I did a few rehearsals with them, but I realised I I wasn't the right drummer for them. And, oh, because uh, they did a tour. I mean, they did the UK tour. This I was it this year or last year I think. Like, uh yeah, they 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 came to America as well. I believe they're coming again. I, I didn't catch up with them. I saw James James Hornsey, the bass player, because he's friends with Gary Olson, who's so there's all these groups you might not have heard of or your listeners haven't heard of, but uh I live around the corner from a guy called Gary Olson, who uh is a has, has a band called the Ladybug Transistor. Um mm -hmm. an Elephant Six type group, and he has a studio there and we do all our recording there, but he's friends with that lot with the clientele and lots and lots and lots of people and uh yeah. so yeah that was that was funny i i just i i, I you know th i think they wanted a really subtle drama and i realized quite quickly that i wasn't subtle because <laughs> i kind of wanted to do drum rolls and things like that you know? <laughs> they like ringo star and it was like it wasn't suitable because the music's lovely so it needed a very uh you know and i think they got they, had, they ended up with the drummer they've got uh, i think uh howard is it or and um and you know and he was all, he was like he's their old friend and he was made for that band so so that worked out nicely i think but yeah the soft city was my first american band um i was uh it was Velocet before it was Velocet yeah, before, it was before so, that even so yeah. let me show you, let me show the chrono i, I got yeah, all the, yeah. Chrono <laughs> chrono the order. so this is the very first record we ever did as comic oh, yeah yeah um and then this was single of the week in the New Musical Express, as as was this one. Um, 
And I think this was, a, this got a nice, I think this might have been single of the week in the Melody Maker. This incidentally is, is um, Jill Price, who is the singer in, in uh, this band, Kicker, who I was in after the set. Uh, all right. We did loads of singles. And all this time I'm drumming, by the way, but this is the first band where I started writing songs and drumming. I couldn't play the guitar. Oh, here's a picture of it. And uh, that's Laura Bridge. Oh no, that's Andy Jones. That's Laura Bridge. Laura's in a in a in a uh, mirror image. She's she's a, a, a great friend, and she she was in a band called Harper Lee, who indie kids might know, with a guy called right. Kairis, who was in a band on Sarah Records, and um, so that's something we did. And um, I used to sing melodies of people, so I go. Andy or Laura, whoever the guitarist was, I was nearest to. And I go, I got this song that goes, and I, can you make some chords? And they'd make some chords and then we'd turn it into a song. And that's how we used to write songs. And they'd write some songs too. But then I thought, I've got to get the guitar because this is like, you know, this isn't working. <laughs> it's too much work. I'm too dependent on people. Um, so I'd have to like think of a song in my head, sing the whole song, you know, with the verse, the chorus, the middle A, everything. Yeah. Without an instrument, and so I got a guitar, and I thought like, you've got to learn some chords because it's much easier. Um, I was still drumming, I kept drumming. The Soft City, my first US band, was with a, guy, a friend called Jason Karechi, who uh, indie obscurist. You know, he had a, a solo project called A Boy Named Thor, and uh, I should send you show notes for this. And um, and uh, yeah, and I I was just new to America, I just moved here, and I wanted to meet people so I, I thought well I'll form a band i put an advert in craigslist i've got i've got a good craigslist story actually wow craigslist <laughs> yeah i put an ad in craigslist say so, you know and i went through craigslist looking for adverts and jason had put yeah. an ad in and I, I i met up with him and i was drumming for him and then and there was another advert and a guy got in touch with me and said oh you know i've, I've listened to what you've done you know the music you've done and uh, i think you know we could uh, we could definitely do something. And he said, do you want to come and audition? So I said, okay. So I went to audition and, um, and he said, oh, I live at this address. He said, but I'll come and pick you up. So I went to the, the end of the subway. He picked me up, took me to his house. It was in a basement and he started playing one of my songs at me. And I was like, oh, that's, that's odd. And, um, and then he said, and so I started drumming and I'm drumming along to my own song, <laughs> and, um, which is playing. And then he says, oh, oh, you're playing a bit slow. And I went, oh, okay, sorry. And I went, wait, this is my song. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then and then the rehearsal ended. And um, and then he said, I'll give you a lift home. And I went, okay. And he gave me a lift home. And then we got stuck in a car park on a piece of wasteland. And he just stopped the car and turned to me and said, I could murder you now. And no one would know. <laughs> and I said, my wife knows where I am. <laughs> No, she didn't. She had no idea. This was pre before smartphones. But anyway, only joking. And I went, okay. So I didn't join that group. <laughs> and, um, if he's out there, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, I was really scared. You scared me. Um, so I ended up start playing with Jason Carici, and and then we started uh, the soft city. It actually started in the, in in Britain. Um, um, but then we started as a, as a group and we got a singer uh, called Dora and Dora Lubin and we, we made an album and a, and a single and I, I was working a lot with Kyle Forrester and Kyle is uh, someone I work with now a lot and he's a great kind of session musician but just a great all-round musician and music teacher and um, he played bass on that record and he he's behind a lot of the stuff on, on Love Burns um right. the solo yeah. stuff but he played keyboards <clears throat> a lot with uh, with pale lights as well um what was your question again <laughs> sorry I'm, like, I'm still laughing at that craigslist one because i think i remember seeing the film there's a film about so like a craigslist yeah. killer or something yeah yeah i think this is this might have been around the same time so it wasn't funny and also when he was in when he was in the basement it, 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 it the basement was the studio was below his grandmother's, so oh, God. I don't know why. That, there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly normal. But for some reason, I was just scared. Um, no, but um, yeah. So um, before before pale lights, because you did mention pale lights now. Um, there's yeah. another one called Cinema Red and Blue. Is that um, Cinema Red and Blue? Is, is the nearest I'll ever get to being in a supergroup. 
and, and here it is. <laughs> oh, so you're a drummer. You're a drummer. Yeah, I was a drummer in that group. And, and it featured David um, in Comic Gain and Anne Law in Comic Gain. And then myself. Uh, I was in the Soft City, but everyone said Comic Gain. And there's Gary Olsen, who I mentioned before. He produced it and he plays on it too. It's Andy Adler uh, and Kyle Forrester. Kyle is, is the, who I mentioned. He's in Ladybug, um, but he's Why? also in, uh, in uh, um, uh, Crystal Stills. A really great band from about 10 years ago. And Andy was the bass player in Crystal Stills. So this was built as a comic game, Crystal Stills supergroup. And it was kind of a weird project because David wrote a bunch of songs. And we did some covers too. We covered uh, The Chills and Vic Goddard and you know Musical Heroes, um, like yeah. that. And um, we met up, we, we rehearsed two or three times, and then we made an album. And it was the most stressful session I've ever done. Because <laughs> uh, I was never quite sure what, because we did like 14 songs and I'm like, oh crap, when's the chorus on this one? What's coming up next? So so my drumming is kind of sim, I decided to keep it simple. And, um, but it was a lot of fun in the end really. And then it, after we'd finished the album, we were, gonna, we were gonna record one album and then play one show. And we played one show at the Cake Shop, which is a, a, a mythical, legendary, it's not mythical, it's legendary music venue, indie pop music venue on the Lower East Side in New York. And um, and we played that one show there and there's a recording of one song on it. And um, and then we ended up doing an EP after that, a uh, Halloween kind of EP. Yeah. Um, but that was a lot of fun and, and um, yeah. And uh, Kyle, I should say, by the way, he's also, he also plays with Woods. And, uh, and he played on um, Purple Mountains, the, the last um, Purple Mountains album as well. Um, All these I love like this record, but it's, it's kind of, and I get to sing on it. I sing the Chills cover. And um, and what's that, the, the late, great um, Hamish Kilgore of The Clean, he also sings. Oh, yeah, yeah. He does yeah. a spoken word part on it. Um, that was a lot of fun, but it was like, it happened and then it was over. We played one show in London. Um, um and that was it and then it was done all right we keep talking about doing it again but it's been 12 years now oh, <laughs> Paris Garden. many people that have recorded at marlborough farm studios will recognize that uh it doesn't usually have the stars and stripes tablecloth to be honest but that's his garden out in the back yeah all those so like seven inch singles and mm. so like indie pop albums that you've got yeah. records that they must so like you it was like really valuable because a lot of so like this in the kids you know they keep them they don't so like once they buy yeah. these ones, i mean the kicker yeah. ones are not particularly valuable i don't think the comic comic game ones i had to buy some back because i gave them all the way and they cost me more money than i thought but no. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, i mean yeah like postcard singles and the, yeah. the go between single you know they go for you know, that's what you used to pay for a Northern Soul 7-inch, you know, it's like, <laughs> I always expect, oh, you know, the, I mean, Northern Soul 7-inches go for thousands of pounds now, but. Um, that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the Tower yeah. Records, I mean. 7-inch singles are so ubiquitous, and when I started Kicker, our dream was to like, well, what we're going to do, and this is what indie bands did, you, you record a bunch of 7-inch singles, you know, and we're like, mm, okay. And then we're going, and then you put them on a CD, and we're like, yeah, CD! <laughs> the CD was the dream. And vinyl was like, oh, this is so old fashioned. I want to be on a CD. And this was in the 90s and, um, and, the, and the early 2000s. So we ended up, you know, putting all the kicker singles on a, on a CD. And, um, but we did make a limited edition vinyl LP, which I'm now I'm really, really pleased about. But, um, but now it's the other way around. Everyone wants to do vinyl. No one wants yeah, to do Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Or records, because people say it's not called vinyl, it should be records, but, you know, people, people call vinyl. them vinyl now. Yeah. Vinyl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The only time I'll, let, uh, I'll tolerate people saying vinyls is when they want to buy one of my vinyls, and then they're oh. <laughs> oh, one of my vinyls. I got vinyls. You can buy these. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. head and toes. Okay, so, so all these um, bands that we've talked about, you play drums in all of them, but yeah. Pale Lights... You're the singer. You're the singer. I'm the singer, and, and and I I actually like had the temerity to try and step up and play guitar. Uh, play guitar, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was talking to Lisa Goldstein, who's 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 the drummer in Pale Lights, and um, I'm I'm like the best person to be in a band with and be the drummer because I used to be a drummer, um, so I'm very I understand 
all the little things that are going on, you know, especially in the kind of indie pop world, which is a bit pro-am, you know, there's some professionals, but there's a lot of people just doing it for the love of it. And they've got day jobs. So they're not, you know, oh, I came back from a 54 day world tour and I'm really, really good. You know, it's like, I'm really nervous. I've been at work all day and we only had one practice, you know, <laughs> for some perverted reason, I really want to put myself through this stress of drumming. And um, so I'm really sympathetic. So if Lisa says, I'm not enjoying playing this song or I'll be like, well, we're not doing it then. We're not doing it live. You know, that's fine. Cause I, I, I've been there and I know there's that song that you don't, you don't like playing. And, uh, and if we are professional, obviously that would be different. But, but Paralyzed <laughs> was the first group and we did a self-released LP. I did the sleeve. It took forever. I did it with, with, uh, with, with the bass player, Maria. Um, and I wrote all the songs on it. And, um, and I, I just started playing rhythm guitar, really bad rhythm guitar. And Andy Adler joined the group and, and Lisa Goldstein and Maria Pace. Uh, I was friends with them. Lisa's a librarian. So we just kind of got together and played and, and, and yeah, yeah. it's to the, maybe, it, and, and, and I just like playing with people I like. And then Suzanne Nineaber joined us later on, who's a wonderful harmony singer. And she plays keyboards. And then we did the second album. This, by the way, copy of this will set you about $250. That's nuts. I know. I was going to say, because I think we've, yeah. we've recently got that at King B. And I think I it's quite and I need 250 copies. If anyone out there wants to reissue it, I'm fine with that. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really love, I, I can't afford to bring it out myself at the moment because I'm always trying to do a new record, but that, that, that would sell some, that would sell 77 copies. Um, and then we did this album on Ronnie's label, KUS, and then we just brought yeah. this compilation out, um, which is on KUS and is on, now on Jigsaw Records uh, of Oakland, California, um, which yeah, is a label yeah. run by a guy called Chris Mack, who's really lovely. Um, and you're touring and you're going to be in Germany as Pale Lights. That's our massive Not tour of two dates in Germany. Yeah. yeah. So we're playing, uh, we're playing the Cologne Pop Fest. Um, right. and, and I've forgotten who else is playing. I know my life story of playing. Uh, um, Jetstream Pony. Um, yeah, yeah. Who, who were on KUS and are on uh, uh, Spin Out Nuggets, I believe now. Or, or I yeah. yeah. Label on. And um, so we're playing with them. We've met them before. They're lovely. It's funny we had an interesting story. How are we doing for time? All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> the, um, Pale Lights have toured Germany before, but I haven't. Because um, a couple of years oh. ago, no, four years ago maybe, um, I got sick the day I was going to fly out, and the band were already there, and I and I delayed my flight, and I just couldn't get better, and I, I couldn't fly out. So the band were all there, so they did the tour without me, and Suzanne sang the lead vocals. And, uh, oh. and I'm just on Instagram posting pictures from my sick bed. I just had a bad flu, but my doctor was like, you can't fly, you can't fly. Um, so Pale Lights have already toured, um, which is funny, without me. So I am expendable. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we're playing Cologne Pop Fest, which we were going to play in in 2020, but that got canceled because of COVID. COVID, yeah, yeah. Because we were going to go, we were going to play Cologne Pop Fest and Paris Pop Fest and and they held the, the reservation open for us. They said, when this is all over, you should come back and play. So we, we, we played Paris Pop Fest last year. And, uh, and so we're going to play Cologne. And Augsburg, you know, is, is where our record label is. Um, so we really wanted to play there too. Um, yeah. And we're playing with uh, Jetstream Pony again there. Um, so that should be fun. Um, and the Beavies? Maybe, are they, the Beavies are playing? The, I don't think the Beavies are playing, no. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But we are borrowing their rehearsal room and all their instruments. Okay. I think they know about this. Um, yeah, I saw the BVs for the first time at Glasgow's Pop. Glasgow's Pop, yeah, that's right. That's, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, those are all the bands that uh, you were in. And so, yeah. like, but now you've got a solo career as well. Yeah. It's, I don't know if there's any other band that I didn't mention or I didn't ask you about. But um, I think we didn't talk about Kicker much, but I did. So. Yeah. <laughs> First, we do, no, I think we've mentioned everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, so uh, the solo one, which is going to be playing in Glasgow Spot Love Burn. in July. Yeah, Love, Love Burn. Burn is like a studio project, and we've got a new um, we've got a new record coming out on Jigsaw KUS, a seven track. Yeah. Um, a mini album, <clears throat> EP. I don't know what seven songs is. Um, <laughs> mini album, yeah. Collection of music. On, on vinyl, a 12-inch vinyl, 
uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, and on it, I actually do an old song. The lead song is on a very old song by a group by by Kicker called Blue, which um, we started playing live because I really like the song. And then and this, like the three fans we have are going, please make it record, please record it. So we recorded it, and it's different from the original recording. Um, but it's it's so that's going to be coming out, and there's going to be like six new songs. Um, and so hopefully that will be out in time for Glasgow's pop. And I'm coming to Glasgow with Lisa Goldstein is going to drum. Usually on the records, it's Hampus Omen Froland, uh, who I have to mention is a fantastic drummer and music teacher. And he's a session player and he plays with lots and lots of people. Uh, if you need a drummer in New York, by the way, Hampus Omen Froland, get in touch with me somehow and uh, I'll, I'll pass on his name. But he, he's a really great drummer. And Kyle Forrester usually does a lot of the stuff. But on the first LP, uh, Love Burns LP, I, I just asked friends to play in it. So Laura from Kicker plays on it and, yeah, um, cool. and uh, a bunch of other people. Ben from Comic Game, who was also in Kicker, he plays on it. And, and um, I've forgotten. <laughs> I'm trying to look at the track list. Oh, here it is. It's your solo, isn't it? So, so yeah, so this. Um, yeah. <laughs> who else is on it? Uh, Jed. Uh, Smith did some recording. Jed is in, um, and uh, and also Alicia from uh, Janine's, who played Glasgow's Pop. Yeah, yeah. They were fantastic. I was so proud of them. Uh, oh, no, I no, some, yeah, yeah. Some Chen as well, um, who, who plays in, in, in some really good groups. Um, he plays excellent guitar on it. Uh, yeah, so that that was, and this is, this is kind of a personal album, because we started doing it, you know, everyone does a COVID album, but we'd started it before, but while we're making this album, my my mum died, and um, oh. and so I, I decided I wanted to put my mum on the sleeve. So that's my mum, that's me, oh. and that's the that's a dog, and the, and the, this is some I forget where this is. I think this is an island somewhere. So this is me and that dog, and my bobble hat. I'm very well dressed. My mother, always, I got a really nice leather jacket. I got a, a Mike Nesmith bobble hat. I think that's a look <laughs> I should try and revive. But um, yeah, so this album means a lot to me just personally, but it's. Yeah. Um, it's so we're going to be playing a bunch of songs from that. We're also going to be doing. Um, I'm also taking Alex uh, Curtin, who used to be in a band called Cause Commotion, and 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 also um, Kenny Wachtel, who's who plays in in. Uh, he's played in a band called Great Lakes, who are an Elephant Six kind of band, um, okay. and we'll be the live band. So I'm really excited about that. I have a special guest from another one of my bands who's going to be singing vocals. Uh, and you can't tell us. You can't tell us yet. Tell you, and uh, and she's going to sing backup vocals, and we're also going to do one of her songs. And it's okay. the 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 clue is she was in a group that I used to be in. Okay. <laughs> um, 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 <laughs> well, well, uh, <laughs> well uh, sorry to hear about your mom, but um, yeah, you know. Th that, group is really i mean it's not really a group it's your one no, it's, it's me a, and but, but it tends to be the same players yeah um, but yeah it's because i want to do something solo um but i didn't want to use my name because i think phil sutton's a bit of a boring name and and i was like thinking, what kind of what can, you know what can i call myself this is this, yeah. this, you know and it's like this is going to be pretentious no woman and for some reason i just got love burns in my head and yeah. uh I was thinking but it's more time. so like love. Yeah. So it's like no, a love, love so here's, here's some music. Love burn. burns. Like love off the burns, it would be really, but oh, it's okay. Much yeah. But unfortunately, it's also, or unfortunately, whatever, it's it's also a song by Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, which I didn't know. So oh, you Google okay. love burns. Don't forget to put the comma in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because I was all like love burns. It's not like love burns it's like love yeah, and then love. the comma and then burn. yeah we've been announced by, there's a guy here called uh jack who lives in hoboken he's known as hoboken jack and he goes to probably probably even more shows than you do he get, he must go to about i saw an article about the guinness book of records like someone who'd been to 150 shows or something in a yeah. year and i was like hoboken jack goes to 300 shows a year i mean he goes to shows, he'll go to two a day sometimes but he's also an mc and he's legendary yeah. around these parts, and he's he's an MC, and uh, he always announces this as love, comma burns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, is, which is very sweet. He's he's, he's a, outside. I don't know if he's known outside of the Greater New York area, but he's he's a legend. Yeah, 
yeah. So that's got something to do with being Hofner Burns. So it's love, yeah. comma, and then it, so yeah. I was like, I know. But you, you left out the Hofner. Posters. You just thought like the Burns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a name. Oh, what? I mean, names are stupid. Bad name. Well, I'm currently doing a new group with Lisa Goldstein and and also Lisa Siegel. He used to be in a group called The Mad Scene with Hamish, Hamish Kilgore and Jason Korechi. And we've just started. And that's going to be. Because pale eyes don't play very often because we all move to different parts of the country or the east coast oh, okay. um so we can only get together very occasionally and we just lisa and i wanted to keep doing something and and i write songs like a ridiculous way of nuts um so we started a new group and we, we, we the hardest worst thing about being in a group is coming up with a band name it's just torture <laughs> yeah. we, we, we've we've suggested looked at and rejected about 200 names already but you know it's going to be something stupid and then it'll just be well this is the name you know <laughs> yeah. can i just can i just ask you though um which do you feel so like more comfortable are you more comfortable playing the drums or the guitar or singing um i'm more comfortable playing the drums and singing i'd say um which i've done a couple of times i did a show where uh jill price who was a singer and kicker she 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 had a cold we we were determined to play the show. So I, I just put a mic by the drums because I, I wrote a lot of the songs and, and then I, I just, uh, I write all the lyrics, um, not all the songs, but. Uh, yeah. So so I, I at my drum kit on my Tom Tom, my Rack Tom, I just put, taped up all the lyrics, which you can do and no one knows you're doing it. And uh, so so I sang and drummed, you know, like like a terrible Karen Carpenter. and. Um, <laughs> And and I loved it. It was great. Now I I feel more comfortable singing and drumming for about ten minutes nowadays, and then I, then I get tired. And, um, oh, God. Well, I'm thinking of this has got me like wanting to play drums again because I, I I put the stick I haven't I downed sticks like ten years ago really to concentrate on on playing guitar and yeah, singing. Yeah. But I'm I'm kind of getting back into it now. So now when we have a pair of lights rehearsal or the new band, I, like if Lisa gets off the drums for two minutes, I'm I'm on there. <laughs> but unlike most singers and guitarists, I can actually play the drums. You know, because in a rehearsal, the singer's always like, I want to go on the drums now. Boom, chick, boom, boom, chick. <laughs> you know, say, like, I can actually do it. But I do it for a minute, yeah. I go, oh, that's better, you know. <laughs> well, are we going to go, are we going to be seeing a bit of drumming at Glasgow Spot? No, maybe. No, oh, no. It's possible. <laughs> it is very possible. I'm not going to, I, uh, uh, I think lightheaded drummer couldn't come initially, um, so I offered to drum. Thank heavens he can come now. So oh. <laughs> they, they're doing a tour as well, so they 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 you know they need their drummer, and their drummer's really good. And, and, um, yeah. and to be honest, I'd rather watch them. You know, <laughs> oh, then play with them, then play drums. Well, I'm sure they're lovely to play with, but uh, you know, but also they're on right after us, and I, I'm you know I'm, I'm too old for to do a two set, <laughs> one set after the other. <laughs> Well, uh, you mentioned so like earlier that you're a librarian mm -hmm. in New York. Yeah. Um, so do you get recognized? No. Like when Only people go to the library? <laughs> I work in the genealogy division. Um, no one has ever come up to me and said, are you Phil from Comic Game? Uh, apart from like people at a show where Comic Game are playing or something. Um, but I work in genealogy and yeah. the local history and genealogy division. So I do a lot of teaching online um and so people will come up to me and go you feel Sutton a lot of the time but it's because of genealogy not because of oh is he <laughs> or music <laughs> maybe one person did maybe i forget but we're much bigger in germany we're like the creation <laughs> so we are in in new york i think we're kind of like not that well known in new york but this is normal yeah. in new york i think you know um, they do uh, pop fests in New York as well, don't they? They used to do the New York City Pop Fest, which is fantastic. Yeah. And, and anyone that's played it will tell you it was it was a lot of fun. And and um, there's a guy called Maz used to put it on, and that was the very first show the Soft City played was was there. And we played with a band called Night School, a Night School with a K, uh, uh, featured Kevin Alvear. And Kevin Alvear has done sleeve art. He's a comic artist. He has a band called The Hairs. Um, and nowadays and um he's really super talented and and lisa was playing drums for him and i remember thinking oh i should ask lisa if she'll drum for us um 
even though I was the drummer at the time. And so she did actually join the soft sea towards the end as the drummer before we, we uh, people moved away and the group split up, but, um, which is normal in New York. And she's just split up because people move away. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, oh. what was the question? Yeah. <laughs> no, about being recognized in New York. As well. Oh, yeah. This is a librarian. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Lisa's a librarian too. She, she's, yeah, yeah. she's at Brooklyn Public Library. I'm at New York Public Library because we have three different systems in New York City. Yeah. yeah. Wow. No. So, no. like, is, is that how you sort of like. If you saw me, but you know, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Well, it's nearly three o'clock, but I've still got all the regular questions that I wanted to oh, ask sorry. you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, first of all, when you play the drums, do you twirl? When do you do the twirling? No, of the, no you don't I do don't it. hit two cymbals at the same time either. <laughs> no. no. I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, my favorite drummers are, are 60s drummers. So like Hugh Grundy of the Zombies. Um, but I kind of grew up watching mostly women drummers, I think, you know, so like oh, Toby yeah. Vale of Bikini Kill, who's not only a great punk rock and rock and roll drummer, but she's a really good pop drummer as well. Um, she plays with a band called Morgan and the Organ Donors, who I really, really like. And, uh, and she has a great kind of pop sensibility. Janet Weiss, who's the drummer and used to be the drummer in Sleet Sleet Kinney, fantastic yeah. drummer, lots and lots of energy. Like, there's a drummer that made you want to dance straight away. I mean, the whole group did, but um, Mo Tucker, her, you know, her economy and an incredible mm -hmm. sense of timing. Like you can talk about, uh, you know, Jackie Leibovitz of Can and like Mo Tucker's in that same school for me in terms of like economy and simplicity, but just having a really good beat. Um, I like drummers that serve the song um, as well. So, you know, nobody, I mean, yeah. everyone says this, you, you, it's true of all instruments. You want someone who can serve the song and doesn't just show off, you know. But if you can twirl the space, then great. <laughs> yeah. So your drum kit setup is just sort of like a very I, minimal. I like don't have a drum kit at the moment because I bought my Ludwig Fab Four reissue kit over, and it sat in in storage. Never played it. Every time you get to a venue, unless yeah. you're a really big group, there's a drum kit there, and they they don't want you to oh. move your drums. So <laughs> I, I I believe in simplicity. So it's going to be like, um, you know, snare kick, floor tom, one rack tom, ride, couple of cymbals, obviously the hi-hats, maybe a tambourine attached to something. Yeah. Um, the cowbell? The only drum lessons I ever had, the drum teacher, <laughs> he was like of that school, and he was like a real old school jazz drummer, and he just had one rack tom. And he said, they only have more rack toms because they're worried they're going to miss this one. You know, so it's like, it's okay. I, if you have lots of drums, it's like, well, you're going to hit one drum, it doesn't matter. But you've got <laughs> discipline to have like, less drums like the old jazz drummers but, so yeah. I, I feel like that setup yeah yeah do you have a cowbell yes yeah <laughs> yes I've got, a, I've got a fever for cowbell yeah <laughs> i just want to hear more cowbell, <laughs> more cowbell. <laughs> i know all the drum i know all the drum references who's that you know the drummer because i'm i was speeding up and slowing down while i was like <laughs> what do you call a guy who hangs out with musicians oh yeah that's that's the favorite one <laughs> it's, not, it's not the drummer drummer isn't <laughs> most, most like drummers in america really are you know i'm an amateur drummer but they're this like they all you know they can play the glockenspiel they do all that percussion stuff like hampus is great at that he's going to put some glockenspiel like that's yeah. Kansas drumming over here, you know, and they all do, except Hampus is Swedish, but they do, um, you know, the marching band stuff. So everyone, you know, the drummers here have got good, this is probably why I don't play drums here, because they've got <laughs> really good chops over here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you go to a lot of gigs in New York? Not so many nowadays, but um, I save all my money to make music, to be honest. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I like doing it. So nowadays, you know, nowadays with the indie bands, the smaller ones, what it is is, you know, you pay for your recordings yourself nowadays and then you license it or, you know, or, or come to some deal with a small label. But that means you own all your recordings, which I'm I'm absolutely fine with. Mm -hmm. And someone like Gary Olsen is really good to record with because he's not very, it's not totally, it's very expensive, but he gets a very professional sound out of the studio. Um, you notice when you ask me one question, I wander off. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, the last show I went to, I went to see Janine's 
uh, lightheaded. I tend to go see indie bands. Or yeah. if there's, I, I, one of my favorite shows I ever saw was Evie Sands. I don't know if you know Evie Sands, the singer. Yeah. All the people in Glasgow know about her. She's, um, um, she's a 60s singer, uh, and she also plays guitar. And um, I'm blanking completely now. Um, <laughs> she was famous for recording songs that then other people would have big hits with a bit later. So First Cut is the Deepest, for instance, was her. Oh, right. Um, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. She did that. I mean, what one of the best versions of it, the, the original and one of the best, I P.P. Arnold's version. So I went to see her play a tiny club day, and it was fantastic. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 that, that was a little while ago. I go to see you a lot of local indie pop bands, but yeah. I'm not so much into the indie pop. I like the indie pop bands that have a have have more of a '60s or pop feel rather than shoegazy bands and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the second question is because you mentioned those female drummers before. So are yeah. those are those like your drumming heroes? I don't really have drumming heroes. I just have drummers I, that make me want to play the drums, and those were examples right, okay. of that. And I'd say uh, Bobby or uh, Bobby from the Hollies, I forgot now, I'm blanking this. The Hollies drummer is fantastic, yeah. really underrated. And Hugh Grundy of the Zombies is fantastic. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, I love Ringo Starr and Charlie yeah. Mills. And again, it's all these drummers that, that they're kind of, they got a little, they're, they're like Ringo is the, the king of amateur drummers, although he was obviously a professional drummer, but he was just the king of originality through. Cause I, this theory that, that, and it's a common theory is that great pop music comes out of amateur performances because you've not been to music school. You've not been taught this is how you do pop music. There's a lot of great professional musicians. They have to unlearn how to be professional musicians like Picasso had to unlearn, this is really pretentious, unlearn how to be an artist to then do something new. But a lot of times amateur musicians, they, 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 they're playing a chord. They don't know what it is, but it's a great chord, you know, or they're playing a beat and it's like, what's that beat you're playing? Um, I don't know. It's just the only one I can do. You it's know? Just like that innovation comes out of this kind of sense of that. And Ringo is obviously the king of of, of that sensibility. Um, yeah. Yeah. So no, no, there's, I mean. I but when you mentioned, when you no. mentioned Bobby, I thought you were going to say Bobby Gillespie of no. Jesus and Mary Jane. I'm not really a fan of Bobby. Um, no. I know a lot of people are. Um, <laughs> I'm never really into Primal Scream. Um, I no? kind of liked him a bit when they went dancey. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the old jingly jangly, but yeah, I'm not going to talk about primary school. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm going to Glasgow, and uh, I'm sure he won't be there. But I don't, I don't want to upset anyone. But you know, I'm not really into them. But that was the drumming. It used to drive me nuts. When I started drumming, I did the floor tom and the snare. You know, so I was like, boom, 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 you know, that ubiquitous CA6 sound, and um, and then I I used to do this drum beat and I go boom. Yeah, yeah. You know, like like uh, uh, the wall of sand, spectre sand, and, and yeah, you know that kind of thing. And uh, but everyone would go, "Oh, you're doing Bobby Gillespie drumming." I was like, "No, he <laughs> didn't invent that." Please. Just like Honey, <laughs> it was probably Hal Blaine or somebody like that. Hal Blaine is a great drummer. He, I, I always get the impression he's a bit of a, a bit of a character. Should we put it that way? Um, but incredible drummer, obviously. There's lots of great drummers from the '60s. I I, I think that this. It, not the showy ones. I'm not really into, you know, the super showy, you know, like, um, like the guy that looks like Steptoe in Cream. Um, I'm not really into that kind of drumming. I know he's a brilliant drummer, and um, but it, I, I like I like the kind of the old jazz drummers. They'll sit there in a wool suit with a knitted tie, you know, and they're playing jazz, and they're not not a bead of sweat. It's all technique, you know, and it's all. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was going to make a list of, of drummers that I like, but I, <laughs> yeah. I forgot. But what about um, disasters? Have you ever had any sort of like accidents? I mean, like playing the drums. Playing drums? Yeah. Just just through lack of ability. Um, that because <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing, and really early on, the, like I remember, we went to play. Uh, it's actually on, on. It actually got released. And I'm, I still feel bad about it to this day. Um, so I'd like to apologize to Sarah and Sam. Um, th this Holloway Sweetheart CP, and uh, this yeah. is so indie, it's like, you know. But um, that's me there looking grim. This is me working at Art Price Records. David just came in and went, we need some band pictures. And he just took a picture. And I, was like, <laughs> I look miserable, you know, I'm at work. Like, 
oh my god you know and it was like we had to play i worked in a cd shop at our price in oxford and we had to play there's themes every day and and for some reason we were simply read wrong and i was just like because I, I wasn't <laughs> going to do it um, anyway but there's a song on this called uh goodbye part one and and we had to play a beat that i'd never played before remember and this time i didn't have a drum kit or anything you know and it was just a kind of three four beat and uh I just couldn't wrap my head around it and it sounds terrible but they still used it i don't know why um but never mind but the song's lovely yeah, um, yeah. That, was a, that for me was a bit of a disaster um <laughs> but only through ignorance you know um, <laughs> i don't think of anything else other than can I, just ask, can I just ask you it's because you mentioned that you know you didn't know what to play or anything or but yeah drumming drumming is uh something that is natural and I think so, yeah like, yeah it's not something that i mean of course you can learn you can go and sort of like have lessons and things like that but it's yeah it's gonna be in you i think anyone can play drums um if you just practice it because it's just muscle memory it's just like coordination like that that beat i talked about then i learned it you know i could play it a few weeks later but it was like too late but um <laughs> but, you know, you just practice it, play along to other records, you know. I mean, that's the amateur way. You, you probably should get some drum lessons too. Um, but I feel, you know, some of the some of the, the most interesting creative drummers are, are people that just, they just play what they feel a bit. I'm sure there's some other drummers out there going, what is he talking about? He doesn't know what he's talking about. But, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, now I'm on the other side of the, uh, the drum kit. I can... Um, yeah, I think there is a, it, it's, 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 it's all about having a little bit of taste, but that's true of all instruments, I think. You know, having the taste to do something that matches um, the music, it goes with it. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah, you, you well, can, you... but I think you need a little bit of extra, you, need, you just want to love doing it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, when you write a song, Hmm. Um, do you already know what the drum part's going to be, or do you start with playing the guitar? Or? Well, usually with like, if it's a band, I like collaborating. I like to go full on collaboration. So you do what you're going to do. I mean, if it's horrible, I'll say to the, you know, that's a terrible bass line. Well, I won't. I'll go, can we, can we maybe, that's great, but can we maybe change it? Um, you know, so in, I, I'm really like not hands on when it comes to collaborative things, because I think that's more interesting, because I want to see what people are going to do. I haven't actually decided, yeah. like, what are you going to do with my song? Um, with Love Burns, it's a little more, not so much hands-on, but a little bit, I get to say to Hampers, for instance, can you play this kind of beat, or that kind of beat, or, you know, oh, this this one, I want, I want it to be a little Velvet Underground, or this one, I want to be a little jazzy, or, you know, so I get, I get to do that, and I do think about that, um, especially as an arrangement, that I've got in my mind, in, in mind, but this is like yeah. this is different because I'm working with people who really are session musicians, I guess. But they're friends, but they're session players, and they um, they're very open to like you know, what do you want me to do? You know, tell me what you want me to do. And and usually I, I'm still like, just can you do you like the monkeys? Can you make it like the monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and they do. Uh, nearly sometimes and if they don't it still sounds interesting <laughs> i'm a very good client I have, you know so you just let them you just let them so, like, so yeah, yeah yeah i mean lisa plays very economically she she I, and i know what she's going to do to a degree and she's always open to suggestions but i like to not suggest too much because i want it i the one thing i when i was playing drums is in one group that didn't work out i was I felt like I had to play a certain beat and they wanted me to play certain beats because they had an idea of how the song was going to be. But I didn't enjoy that because um, oh, okay. I was an amateur and I just wanted to play what I played. Um, but that's, I mean, if, if you have that toolkit, you know, you can draw on all these different kinds of drum styles, then that's fantastic. Because um, you can always make it your own a little bit still, I guess. But, but yeah, I like collaboration and, and seeing what happens. It's more exciting. Yeah. Okay, well, last question is, uh, yeah. what, <laughs> what would be your advice to aspiring drummers or musicians in general? Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't listen to me because you'll get bad habits. Uh, <laughs> I've been asked to teach people how to drum in the past, but I'm always like, no, you should see a professional because immediately <laughs> you will have a bad habit. 
you know, uh, if I teach you. But I, I'd say um, my, I guess my tip is to don't be too much of a perfectionist. Don't worry too much about what you're doing. The one thing I learned in comic gain, even though it's traumatic and I wouldn't advise being that extreme, is that it's okay to be crap for a while. You know, don't just just be crap for a while. And you'll probably still develop some interesting things along the way as you get, as you get better and better. Or keep writing if you can. Just keep writing songs. Just always be making stuff. Always be doing things. Don't be a perfectionist. Don't you know? Don't go down the my bloody Valentine path and wait ten years to you know. Oh, I finally got a song I'm not embarrassed about. Put out a song even if it's rubbish, because then you can do another one and then another one and then another. Oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so don't be afraid of making mistakes and have fun. I come again. Gonna be playing again. With you on drums? Never. Never? All right. Yeah, I actually left Comic Game 20 years ago. Um, no, 1997. What is that? Is that 30 years ago? <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, I've, I've played the odd show with Comic Game. Like you put yeah, up a video. Yeah, that's on YouTube, that was yeah. In, in about 2008 or 9, 2009. But I just right. sat in because their, their regular drummer couldn't make it. And it, that was funny because I was flying into London to go to a, a library conference on academic publishing. And I was at library oh, school. And, yeah. and, and it, was, it was also just an excuse to visit friends and family and stuff. And then I said, David, I'm coming into town. Uh, I see Comic Gainer playing. I'll come and try and catch you. And he went, can you play drums? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would have just landed. And it's like, uh, and of course I said yes, because it's I love playing. <laughs> Actually, I, it was traumatic to begin with, but by the end, I love playing with Comic Game because Kei Ishikawa, the, the, the bass player, is a fantastic bass player to play with. Um, so it's actually fun. So uh, prob I'll never say never, but probably not, but maybe. No. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Phil, for uh, joining Thank you, Anne. It's been wonderful. Um, oh, and you I'm really looking forward to all the rubbish out of this, won't you? All my drivel. No, no, I'm really looking forward. Oh, crap, we're yes, live. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm really looking forward to sort of like seeing your glass go pop. I'm so. looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. The, the best thing is we're on first. We're the kind of band that likes to be on first because then we can just calm down. Go to the and buffet, enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Hang out in the green room, which I've never been allowed in before. Um, <laughs> there's, there's this English guy in there. He's just, he won't get up. He won't leave the seat. Um, but yeah, and it's going to be fun. And Lisa and I are both so excited to be opening and playing, but also to not, not be on later because we can enjoy the day without nerves. So <laughs> I'll see you there, Anne. Yeah. And, and also, you you'll be, well, hopefully, you'll be drumming for a bit. Maybe just one or maybe, two maybe songs. Maybe one song. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I can do okay. that drum. If we get a sound check, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. well, thank you so much phil and enjoy the rest of yeah enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you in july in glasgow in july. all right bye. thank you take care bye bye, bye. bye. Oh, thank you so much everyone for joining us live that was really fun and it was all like i mean he's mentioning all these musicians and i should know them. i should really really talk like get into the indie pop music scene more because uh i would love to do that i mean i'm sure a lot of my filipino friends who are into indie pop the cool kids of in the philippines um they know all these bands and all the uh, names of the musicians that phil mentioned today so um yeah once again thank you all so much for joining us and i'm really looking forward to seeing love burns love comma burns um at glasgow's pop and you know like what phil said if you're in the UK and um, you're into indie pop, please sort like go to Glasgow's Pop. It's one of the best music festivals um, in in the UK, and it's just absolutely amazing. It's a two day festival, so it's uh, Friday night. Uh, Friday nights they're the on the Friday afternoon they're the first one. Love Burns will be the first one, so like play on a Friday, and then. Another thing that I'm so like really in, uh, excited about is Jerry Love is going to be playing at Glasgow's Pop as well. He's the latest sort of like uh, uh, act to be added, to be included in Glasgow's Pop. So I'm really looking forward to that. But anyways, uh, I'll be back not on Sunday next week, but Monday. 
Uh, and don't forget on Sunday, I think the 31st, clocks go back. So, um, yeah, so I won't be doing that Sunday uh, for us at Jummer, but I'll be doing it on the 1st of April, which is a Monday. And please do keep an eye out for the guest announcement post for that. But for now, um, thank you and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, see you all again soon. As always, love music, love life, love, love, love drummers. They're absolutely amazing. They're the best. And I'll see you all again next week. Bye for now. Bye.